Hello and welcome to the first lesson on this Upper Intermediate 1 course on English Focus. In today's lesson, you're going to learn about how lessons work on English Focus and we're going to review some verb forms. I mean, you guys are all quite advanced, so the grammar focus will be revision and you're going to practice speaking with your classmates. In future lessons, we'll focus more on, gro on grammar or vocabulary or pronunciation, but today will just be a bit of a review to ease you into learning this way. Okay, so first, the website. Well, you're here, so you managed the most important step. On the right, there's uh, my left, your right, there's a, there's a chat room. If you haven't said hello already, please do. I think it would be great if you could say who you are and where you're from. Above me, there's a timer. This is a stage timer. You see, in each lesson there are stages. You can see a list of the stages on the left. When the timer above me runs out, the next stage will start. Generally, the stages will either be input stages, which will be me talking like this, or they will be speaking stages. For the speaking stages, I'll put you into pairs. If there's an odd number, there'll be one group of three, and you may have to improvise a little. When a speaking stage starts, this video will disappear and you'll see a screen like this. There's an activity on the left and there are webcams here. You'll be able to see your own webcam on the bottom and your partner's webcam on the top. Sometimes you and your partner will have the same materials, but normally you'll see different things. One of you might have a, a picture and the other some questions. Or there might be some dialogue prompts or some sort of activity you have to do together. This is much better than a normal classroom because you can't cheat. The number of times I've worked hard on a pair work activity and when I get my students going, they just show each other the answers. This way, to complete the task, you'll have to speak to each other. It's fantastic. OK, these classes are online and this is an educational site, so there's also a report user button. Uh, please don't press this button unless your partner is doing something really horrible. This will instantly take a picture of your screen and email it to me. It will also freeze your partner's account. I will review the screenshot and if there's nothing wrong, I'll unfreeze the account, but it's a pretty serious move. I hope nobody ever has to use this. All of the learners on the site have completed a placement test and paid to join a class, so there are easier ways to get your kicks. But it is the internet, and as the site is educational, there may be young people here. Right, I have more to tell you, but first, some English to think about. I want to start with a little activity on question forms. Here are 10 questions. 1. Could you tell me your name? 2. What do you do? 3. What are you studying? 4. Do you have a car? 5. Do you live in a house or a flat? 6. You live in a castle? 7. You're from Poland, aren't you? 8. What's your favourite food? 9. Have you got any brothers or sisters? 10. Have you ever been to London? I want you to look at these questions and think about question forms in English. How many different types of questions are there? For example, number four, do you have a car? Or in natural spoken English, do you have a car? This is an example of a yes-no question, sometimes called an inversion because of the position of the subject, you, and auxiliary verb, do. Can you please look at the list of questions for 30 seconds, and then in the lesson chat, write how many different question forms you can find.
Okay, let's see if you're right. There are six question forms here. You know the, uh, the yes, no inversion type. Next is the QASV type, that's question word, auxiliary, subject, verb. These are sometimes called WH questions. Next there's subject questions. This is where you want to know who or what the subject of a verb is. I think what is your favourite food or that sort of question is the most common when you're learning. You can see here you can you can just replace the subject of a quest replace the subject of a sentence with the question word. What's next? Uh, question tags. These are quite informal and as I'm sure you're aware are often used to check that someone agrees with you rather than as ways to actually find out information, aren't they? Almost there. The fifth form is simply to use a questioning intonation. You can make a question just through intonation. Of course. And the last form that's worth defining are indirect questions, which we use to try to sound more polite. Okay, now I want you to complete an activity in pairs. This is just a grammar activity, but it's the first chance for you to try out the pairing and chatting. In this activity, you need to read a question and then work out which of the question forms I've just spoken about it is. You'll have to choose one from four. So when the speaking stage starts, I'd like you to first say hello and introduce yourself. One of you will be A and the other B. It will say you are A or you are B on the slide. If you're in a group of three, there will be one A and two Bs. Next, I want you to click onto the next slide. If you're A, I'd like you to ask your partner the question to the first. I'd like you to ask your partner the answer to the first question. You could say, so what do you think the answer to this question is? Or what question form do you think this is? And your partner will suggest a question type. I think this is a QASV question. When you have agreed, you can click and find out if you're right. Then continue to the next slide and this time B can ask A and, and so on. This way, you'll work your way through your first activity and get to test out the speaking stage. Are you ready? I'll start the pairing now. And off you go. <laughs> 